Welcome back, Gadgeteers. So, it's been a little busy for me these last few days. I do apologize for not having any videos out, but all day today, uh, I have been working on a video about the Yoga 920 and my experiences using Fedora on it. And I have to say, things have been really, really good. The install was far easier than I thought and I will have that video out shortly, so I'm not gonna go too in depth, but I did wanna let you know, if you have a problem getting VirtualBox working, I have the answer for you. Now, there are some problems with VirtualBox that I've experienced that are typical, and I have a video where I did install VirtualBox, so you can go back and check that one out. And it's usually one of a couple of things. One, so if I do a get enforce here, we have enforcing for SE Linux right now. Sometimes it helps to set it to permissive. There could be a couple of packages that you're missing, in which case, usually the installer for VirtualBox will tell you which packages you're missing. So, I had all the usual issues, but for some reason, during the installation of VBox config, it would fail when it was creating the uh, VirtualBox program itself. So I couldn't figure out why there was this problem. And I searched and I searched and I searched and I tried a variety of different suggestions on the internet. And then finally, I stumbled on this one. And this was the exact message that I was getting. And I thought, what is the deal? Why is this happening? So let's scroll down a little bit. So I had a very similar output. Now I have a much newer kernel, of course. I'm on a, I think it's 4.15. Yeah, 4.15.6-300. So I thought maybe it's because the kernel is too, too new. Um, but with VirtualBox, I have not had that problem in probably five years where the kernel is so new, they actually don't have kernel modules yet for VirtualBox. And you have to wait. It could be days or weeks or whatever. But again, I haven't had that problem in a really long time. So this is exactly the error message I would get. It would go through and do the building of the kernel modules and the services, and then it would start building the VirtualBox kernel modules and end up failing. And if you did dmessage, this is essentially the same thing as I got. I thought, okay, this is not helping me. And the author of this request said the same thing. He said, I don't really know exactly what to look for here in dmessage, and I didn't either. So I scrolled down and I saw this. And I thought, well, I turned off Secure Boot, so there's no way in the BIOS that Secure Boot is on. I know it's turned off. So I was at a <laughs> crossroads, if you will. I was thinking I should just keep working on trying to figure out what is wrong with VirtualBox because that's really what's wrong because I know I know I turn secure boot off clearly it cannot be that and I thought you know I think I'll just go in and check really quick and I did so let's go check out some pictures I've got here here is a picture I took with my phone just a few minutes ago and look what is turned on again now I do have a dual boot system here it has Windows 10 and it does have Fedora 27 on it now when I went to install Fedora 27 I disabled this and I went to the exit 
and if you click exit with save it automatically saves this setting as you know because I set it for disabled and I was able to install Fedora 27 and I'm pretty sure you cannot install Fedora 27 with secure boot enabled here's my thinking I have had the situation before in Windows 10 where I received an update from the Windows 10 update service of a Lenovo BIOS UEFI BIOS update package this was a problem before for me on my Yoga 910 but on the Yoga 910 it really caused a huge problem and broke both my Windows 10 and my Fedora installation. That's a whole different story. Luckily, the BIOS settings in the Yoga 920 are much easier to deal with. The only thing that you have to do to install Linux is to disable Secure Boot. But apparently, now I have been booting back and forth into Windows and Linux because I use Windows for work. Apparently, Secure Boot got turned on again because I was getting this precise error message. And again, I thought, you know, it can't be that it's turned on again. There's just no way. I was having the same exact problem. So... I turned Secure Boot off again and booted up. And lo and behold, if I go ahead and launch VirtualBox, now I only have one virtual machine here right now, which is a test virtual machine. And I don't have an ISO for it or anything like that yet. But if I start it before. I would have immediately gotten an error message. I never would have seen this boot up screen. So the moral of the story here is, unfortunately, it is possible for Windows to make changes. Now, I can't exclusively say that Windows 10 did this, but I can't imagine what else would have re-enabled Secure Boot. The only thing I can think of is that Windows 10 did download another package with a firmware update for my Yoga 920. And here's why I'm thinking that might be so. I'll have to do some investigating and get back with you at some point. But I have had it happen on the Yoga 910 and we know that there is a variant of Spectre that requires a firmware update. It is possible that I have received that firmware update or I've received a firmware update of some sort that's independent of Spectre. All those packages are listed in Windows, so at some point I'm going to go and check. But the main thing here is, if you're having funny problems with any Linux version while you're in your Yoga 920 or any more modern laptop that's running a UEFI BIOS, and it has the secure boot feature and you start to experience strange problems, I do recommend checking to see if secure boot is still disabled. And if you made any other setting changes in your BIOS, check those as well. Because sure enough, as soon as I made this change, everything was working perfect again. Anyway, now I can get back on track and start working on my video about the Yoga 920. And I've created a really handy dandy list of all the steps that you need to go through. Unfortunately, I think it's going to take me a couple more days because I need to compile some footage for the video. And I do apologize that it's going to take so long, but I would rather do it right than rush it and get a video out that's crappy. I want to make this one more concise so that if you do decide to buy a Yoga 920 or maybe one of the newer Yoga 720s, I'm going to give you more of a step-by-step -step install recommendation to help you get through putting a flavor of Linux on your Yoga 920. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in just a few days on Fast Gadgets.
This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.